Alters don't just stop existing when they're not in control of the body. That'd be weird. Hey everyone, my name is Parsifal, and today I'm going to be talking about inner worlds. Now, an inner world is where alters go when they're not in control of the body. It's a place in the mind where alters can reside, and it can be just as real as the world out here. The inner world could be somewhat of a representation of what the child was going through during times of abuse. There could be places that are off-limits, places that people don't dare to go, or places that are very similar to places that they grew up. Every system's inner world is as diverse as the system itself. They could be just about anything, too. They could be something like a black void or some sort of nebulous void, which is what we started out with. They could be things like a house, an apartment, a single room where everyone has a space. It could be a city, an island, a whole planet, or even a small solar system. And I know this sounds far-fetched, but keep in mind that these places were typically created by children going through abuse, where the only safe place they had to retreat was in their mind. They could be created to be safe places, a home away from home, a world where the abuse and the trauma didn't exist. Thick boy, get off of the desk, please. <laughs> and inner worlds are not always set in stone. Over time, and with the help of some alters, it can be changed. For example, if their system is going through a lot of developments, or the old inner world simply wasn't enough to house the amount of alters that exists, it could be added to, it could be changed, it could be improved, or some parts could be taken away. And if you happen to have a larger inner world, more of it could be discovered, like what we do. Over time, you could unearth more parts of your inner world, and along with these new places you're discovering, you may also discover more alters. And while that might sound like something disadvantageous, it could actually be helpful in the long run. Some of these alters you discover could be crucial parts that hold crucial memories, and they could help you get further along in your journey of healing. And this might sound very abstract to you, and you may not have yet explored your inner world, but I'll help you out with where to start. So, first off, uh, establishing good communication with your alters is a must when it comes to these things. And you can communicate with them and ask them what it's like where they are. If you're still in the stage of communicating through a notebook, you could simply write down a question such as, What is it like where you are? Or, Are you in a room? Are you in a house? Where do you live? Something like that, and you may get some descriptions like that as well. And that may be a good first step when it comes to discovering your inner world, because having a vague description of things is always good. Now, a method that we tend to use is getting a visual on a specific altar, like trying to look inward. It's almost like when you're in a video game and you die and you go into spectator mode and you kind of watch what's going on from afar. That's what we mostly experience when we're looking into the inner world and alters can go and explore and you can watch them and see what they discover. Although it's always good to make sure that they know you're watching them so it's not awkward and you're not stumbling upon something you shouldn't stumble upon quite yet. Now, sometimes exploring your inner world straight off the bat and diving in completely may not be the best idea for you. There may be some things out there that would be better to remain on Earth for a little bit, or at least until you're ready for it. When it comes to exploring your own inner world, you have to really listen to yourself or selves and kind of figure out what's best for you at the given time. If you're not in a very good state, you may not want to go into that room that no one dares to go into. You may want to wait until you're in a better headspace for that. Like I mentioned, everyone's inner world is unique and you shouldn't feel like compelled to have a similar inner world as other people. Each one is tailored to the system and its needs and that could develop over time. And now, I also mentioned that some of us have inner worlds that more resemble planets, and we are one of them. As a system with roughly 108 altars currently, uh, a house would not suffice. We would be at each other's throats constantly, so we needed something bigger. Now, we've had this inner world the way that it is for a very long time. I'm not exactly sure when it started, but when we first became aware of it, it was somewhat of a nebulous void. But with further exploration, we discovered that there was this planet that's been there for very long, and I wanted to share it with you today. So first off, creating a map is something that's very good for inner worlds and such. There are apps you can get where you can design houses and kind of tailor things to how it looks in there. You can also use things like The Sims. Uh, that sounds a little bit weird, but it's actually very effective if you have a smaller inner world. 
or you can draw it yourself, or you can do what we did and create a painting. <laughs> Uh, we have it sitting up on our wall over here, and we might make that our background for future videos, but at the moment it's at a very odd angle, and the college-issued furniture is kind of an obstruction. But one of the things that I really wanted to share was a little video that we made uh, of painting it, because it's a very large painting, and we found this canvas at Goodwill, and it started out as a very blank thing, but we had some very great additions that we did to it. And I wanted to show you this um, sort of speed paint video that I've made of this. So without further ado, this is what it looks like inside our head.
considering the fact that we are an artist, I feel like it's kind of fitting to show off one of our paintings. This is one of our long-term projects that we're really proud of. Having something like a painting to do for an inner world is really helpful as well, at least for our experience, because as things are discovered and rediscovered, it may change over time. And paint is one of those substances you can keep working with for a long time. You can paint so many layers over something and it'll still look good. So currently it looks somewhat like this, and it's not yet complete. We're going to add the titles of the different regions and like the names of the places, and that's going to be in part two. Like you may have seen, this is a part one video of Inner Worlds, because if we got into talking about what our inner world is like exactly, what the dynamics are, and who lives where, this video would be roughly an hour, and I don't think people really have time for that. So in place of making this video half an hour long, I'm going to cut it into two parts. And before I start making part two, if anybody has questions about what this world is, what these strange structures are, who lives where, I'd like you to leave these comments down below and I can address them in the following video. Uh, thank you for watching and I hope you all have a good evening.